Next item is item number five, application. Okay, and we close the hearing. Okay. Item number five is an application for a certificate of appropriateness at 294 Columbus Avenue in the Upper West Side, Central Park West Historic District, docket number 16-2569, block 1145, lot 33, a neo grec and Renaissance Revival style flats building designed by Tom and Wilson and built in 1886 to 87. This is an application to install a sign panel and signage. southwest corner of the intersection of Columbus Avenue and West 74th Street. Um, the historic tax photograph is on the left-hand side of the screen and the existing condition um, today is on the right. So this proposal is to remove the modern sign band and cladding from above the storefront infill um, and install a new painted wood slat sign panel with pin mounted backlit letters. This proposal will not cause the removal of historic fabric um, it cannot be reviewed at staff level because this location would have historically had a cornice type element above the storefront and this proposal does not recall this missing architectural feature. Um, the staff level rules also do not provide for illuminated signage. The commission should also note that the storefront infill below the sign panel meets the staff level rules and is therefore not being reviewed by the commission today. The project applicant is here to further explain the proposal and answer your questions. Good morning, Commissioners. Michael Gavaletta, MD New York Architects. Uh, as Ember described, the, the storefront is, is in fact has been approved by uh, the staff level. And, and we're really here just, uh, if I may, um, um, to just kind of uh, get the approval of, of what is really the, our sign ban. And traditionally, you can see in the archive photo that the sign ban is really appropriately named. It, it's a it's sign bandage uh, uh, for the storefront itself. And you can see that there's various uh, our adjoining neighbors and um, have canopy over their sign band. And what has happened is that <clears throat> during some of these removals, and even when we did our own probing, I'm sorry, get this to work correctly. When we've done our own probing, uh, we've uncovered what the, the fabric below. Um, and, and as part of that, we realized that um, when we found our cast iron columns, um, the sign band is actually has always been um, uh, concealed. It's untooled, unfinished masonry. Um, some of the, our adjoining neighbors have not addressed that, probably prior to landmark designation, but, but we need to address it. Uh, and it actually runs right up, almost up to the windowsill. So um, without the sign band, we would actually have a, an unfinished facade uh, above, the, above the windows. Um, We've also walked the neighborhood, and, and you can see that it's treated in various ways. And, and this is really where corporate America does their thing. Uh, McDonald's wants their sign band, um, Starbucks as well. Uh, there's a rather attractive um, metal right in the, in the center of Robert Stewart Salon, uh, a very attractive solid metal sign band. And again, I always would have the same profile as, as a singular plain, if you will, uh, without any raised panel, slightly on an angle, but again, the, the reason that we included this is that the, the need for corporate identity uh, is ever present despite the designation. <clears throat> uh, the store in itself is rather simple. Um, uh, again, it's, it's, it's just over about a thousand square feet. Uh, this will be for a retail establishment for beauty products originating in South Africa. Um, they're looking for this to be their, their flagship store, one of their flagship and you can see the, on the uh, detail on the right, uh, above our louver uh, that we require for HVAC, there's, a, there's approximately a three foot one inch sign band. Um, we're proposing a, a slatted uh, oak painted um, with just a simple singular name of uh, rain with some smaller letters below that. The, the, the corporate logo will be internally lit pin letters. Uh, we would turn the corner onto 74th Street, again with our matching storefront and our sign band. Uh, we're going to paint that uh, a Sierra Spruce. The size of the letters is about one foot two uh, out of the three foot one sign band. 
Uh, is the wood stained or, 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 or it's painted? painted. The entire facade is painted. All painted. Louvers, uh, painted, factory painted to match. <laughs> Uh, it, it's rather um, uh, s small in terms of a public hearing, but this is what we're here for. Uh, and again, it's, it's the staff level approval that we would have gotten was not what their corporate image uh, liked uh, out of Los Angeles. Um, there were some remarks that it looks so much like an Italian restaurant. And quite frankly, we were here about a year ago for the same location. And it was a restaurant. It's just that mm -hmm. that venue doesn't work in such a small space. And as a restaurant, the, the uh, raised panel worked very well. Uh, in a retail setting, it does not. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you want. Any questions? Yeah, I just want to know why you're using the oak uh, rails. It's going to be painted. Is it intended to be smooth, or is it gonna, are you doing something with the joints? Is it uh, durability, quite frankly? have convinced the owners to use hardwood. Uh, they wanted to use pine. Um, upon the recommendation of Committee Vote 7, we, we, we revisited that. Um, one of the things I found out working with out-of-town designers is they're not really familiar with how much snow and how much weather they're actually getting here. Uh, so that was the reason. So is it not going to bleach or, I mean, over time with water well, and weather, it, it, it has a the hardwood color. It, it, it would just hold up uh, better. Oak snow? I don't call it snow. I guess it's our entire storefront is actually made over the last year. Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, we'll take the testimony. Mark Diller. Good morning, Commissioners. Mark Diller from the Community Board 7 and its Preservation Committee. Um, we uh, looked at the entirety of the proposal, even though only certain aspects of it are before you. And in that total context, we found that the subdued colors and the um, arrangement of the elements, especially the interplay between the sign band and the louvers below, which we thought were sensitive to the, uh, the neighborhood. This is a very commercial stretch um, within the Landmark District, Columbus Avenue from probably all the way from Lincoln Center to at least 88th Street is um, building similar to this with uh, commercial on the ground floor. In that context, this is sensitive to the building above and better than most. Uh, we did see this once before and there was a more, uh, somewhat less interesting approach to fenestration and lighting. Uh, so this is an improvement over the previously approved design. Um, we did have one concern, which apparently has been addressed, and we appreciate the fact that the applicant took to heart our concerns. Our concern was that use of pine, <coughs> excuse me, would weather poorly uh, in our district. Perhaps we were overreacting to last year's storms and, and, uh, and winter weather, um, but it would be very hard on pine, and so we're pleased to hear that oak is a substitute, and we think that that would be more durable. Um, the maintain, using oak and maintaining the color scheme uh, is above my pay grade, but it does seem that if we can accomplish the goal of the subdued color, which seems to work with their um, commercial identity and also work with our neighborhood presentation, that this would be um, an, uh, an acceptable design, appropriate to the neighborhood, better than what was there um, in the previous iteration. And so we recommend it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Max Yeston. Max Yeston, Landmark West. We note with displeasure that this storefront at 294 Columbus Avenue has been left in an entirely decrepit state by this landlord since the last tenant left over six months ago and Columbus Avenue has been poor for it. Historically, signboards on the avenue have been of a temporary nature since the retail strip's inception in the late 19th century. The committee therefore believes that where, as in this instance, no historic fabric is affected, broad latitude should be granted in these matters. The committee believes both the signboard and the simple pin-mounted sign itself are appropriate. Although the commission is reviewing only the proposed signboard, we are deeply disappointed that the remainder of the storefront is merely being reviewed at staff level. The historic cast iron columns are an integral part of the historic development of Columbus Avenue and, there are, and are simply too important not to receive as thorough a review. With that in mind, the committee would like to comment on the storefront. 
It is noted that the only historic elements at this storefront are seven columns, four of which are round in plan and are behind the storefront's plane, one of which is a round column at the northeast corner, and two of which protrude from the plane and are therefore effectively pilasters. The previous storefront, for all its flaws, recognized this difference and, like the storefront immediately to the south, left the round columns exposed, even if poorly detailed. This plan proposes to obscure the round columns, except encouragingly at the northeast corner, and mimic the two historic cast iron pilasters with wooden fascia in front of the round columns. Are to be paint, all are to be painted in a uniform color, thereby disguising the new as old. The committee holds that what is historic should be historic and mimicry avoided. The proposed faux pilasters obscure the original design's nature and rhythm. They masquerade as something they manifestly are not. Retailers on Columbus Avenue pay substantial rent for the linear front feet, their display space on the street, more than for their square footage. The scheme here runs contrary to that interest as it blocks views of the tenant's merchandise with a set of wooden pilasters. This is both counterproductive and contrary to the historic goal of openness in retail frontage. The committee recommends that false pilasters be eliminated, the round columns remain freestanding behind the glazing, and that the building thereby be allowed to tell its own story. The result would be a much simpler and more elegant storefront, faithful to both the history and spirit of this mercantile facade, and serving the merchant's interests better in turn. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly Carroll? Kelly Carroll, Historic Districts Council. Overall, the storefront proposed is a vast improvement, and the committee was happy to see that the historic cast iron columns are revealed and restored. Regarding the sign, we felt that the storefront and the sign were viewed as one piece rather than separate features, and that there should be some delineation between the storefront and the sign band. We suggest incorporating a cornice, since you're doing this from scratch, or choosing a different color for the sign band inspired by the building's array of stone, masonry, and cast iron materiality. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other comments? Do you want to respond? Just respond to yes. Uh, we are not concealing our cast iron columns. Um, we're, we're both exposing uh, <clears throat> the corner as a freestanding round column. There are two additional rectangular columns that the storefront butts up to but does not conceal. Uh, there are three round columns that our pilots are centered on them, uh, and they can, because they're so far back from the existing storefront, we can't push our storefront back to meet them. Um, but they're not concealed. They're exposed on the inside of the store. It's and, I, I and understand. The limitations of just for the glass. Just for the clarification, the round columns were always interior storefront columns, while the square pilasters were always outside of the building. So they were historically interior. Mm -hmm. And the, the no exterior problem. columns are, will be revealed and incorporated into the new storefront proposal, which again meets the rules and is getting a staff level approval. Right, so I know that you responded to that, but that's the ours, uh, actually what we're looking at is really the signage. Um, are there any concerns about the signage? It seems very straightforward. Okay. I just think yeah. we should maybe add to the uh, staff level uh, review. I mean, if we're okay with the pin mounted back of the letter, maybe that should be added to the okay things. Okay, uh, for, for staff rules, yeah, we could take that into consideration for uh, when we look at that proposal. Okay, uh, so um, I will move to close the hearing. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, Roberta, you want to read that? Thank you. All right. Um, in the matter of 294 Columbus Avenue, also known as 100 West 74th Street, Upper West Side, Central Park, West Historic District, application is to install a sign panel and signage. Um, I recommend approval, finding that the removal of the existing cladding and signage will not cause the removal of any significant historic fabric, that the installation of the sign panel in a location that historically featured a cornice will not diminish the exist an, an existing unifying element or preclude the restoration of the cornice in the future, that the placement materials and finish of the proposed sign panel and applied letters will be typical of sign panels found at buildings of this type, style, and age throughout the historic district, uh, that the single modern design and detailing of the sign panel will be compatible with the new storefront infill to be installed below it, 
and subordinate to the decorative features of the facade above, helping to provide a harmonious transition between these portions of the building, and that the, moder uh, the moderate amount of signage and subtle black lit illumination will not overwhelm the building or storefront or draw undue attention to the sign. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This application has been approved.